if I put a robot on his neck with a Christmas blackboard. Confess! You are a choice, so jump it is undeserved, Mr. Holmes. You can hardly sweat my man was about to die. Never mind, just where this bow was. In any case, I've only been charged with stolen property. The stolen property charge is a temporary expedient, Mr. Blackwood. Soon you will be indicted for murder in the first degree. Now, here's a friendly word. Once the English judicial, no, judicial, no, judicial ah, system traps a capital criminal in its capacious maw. It chews on him like a piece of dough, tough mutton, and after it breaks him down, it unceremoniously spits him out like a repulsive piece of crystal. Would you not wish to spare yourself that aggravation? Mr. Blackwood, your situation is precarious, to put it mildly. Do you have anything to say to mitigate your crime? Anything that might save you from the hangman? Mr. Holmes, it was an accident. That's rare. I didn't mean to kill that girl. I was hired to find a letter that she was supposed to be holding. What was in this letter? Heaven the foggiest. I never found it. I searched the dicks and her dressing room and came up empty. So I held her up outside the theatre, figuring she had it on her. Blackwood, you murdered the woman. Why, if you merely wanted to rob her? I'm getting to that. She panicked, see, and I got overexcited. I sliced her to make her stop screaming, but it's my training, understand? I went for the carotid artery. She was dead in seconds. Then I tried to make it look like the ripper done. It cut her up and took her jubilee. So that the job was a total loss. What a sordid story. A simple robber returns from the heinous murder of a young woman. What could be worse? Since you ask, it turns out that Sarah Carraway was the wrong girl. She's a redhead, you see. I was supposed to be looking for a sister, Anna Carraway, who's a blonde. It's Anna who supposedly has the letter. How did you discover your error? Party that hired me, old gent, very high tone, if you know what I mean. He became very agitated when I described Sarah, and after I told him she didn't have the letter and that she was deceased, he yells, Sarah, says he, you idiot, it's Miss Car Anna Carraway who has the letter. I beg your pardon, says I, but I never told her Christian name, and it just said her name was Carraway. The nerve of some people. I left him standing there at St. James Park, fuming at the sky. Who is this gentleman? I said his name was Fitzroy, but I'm certain it's a lie. People lie to me when they need my services. It's a sad commentary on human nature, isn't it? Why did he hire you? I've got a tiny reputation among the upper classes. I've done a lot of penny strong arm stuff, a touch of blackmail, and the outfit of dealing goods without the benefit of sales received. But I never killed. And it was an accident, I swear. Swear no more, Mr. Blackwood. Let the facts, ta facts tell the tale. Okay. It was seen, Mr. Blackwood, that we recovered the letter you were hired for after all. What do you mean by that, folks? Anna had given the letter to Sabah for safekeeping. It was hidden in the pendant you took from her the night you murdered her. Now, if you expect any leniency at all, you will reveal the whereabouts of your fence. How ironic, is it, Holmes? I do my job and get a rope for it. Well, it won't do me any good where I'm going. Talk to a party name of Jameson. Here's a pawn shop on the other side of the river. A perfect front first line of work. He and I had a few business dealings over the years. He's a clever fool and pretty well connected. Do you have anything more to tell us, Mr. Blackwood? I've coughed up, up everything I know. I hope you can save me from swinging. Who's to tell Blackwood? I doubt it. But you knew that, didn't you? You may feel better with a clear conscience. I, unfortunately, do not. Anything? Okay. Um, just a small hint. If somebody is screaming at you like a madman, don't cut them. It usually doesn't make them stop screaming. I don't know. Slap them in the face or put your hand over the mouse, but. Don't cut them up, idiot! Do we have to talk to Watson? Yes. Yeah. You just want to leave. Can I go to the pawn shop now? Can I leave the gate? Uh, 
on the other side of the street. There's the there's the Jade Tunes buying and selling. Giona, Nigel, whatever. I have good reason to believe that you have recently come into elite possession of an oval-shaped ivory pendant and a heavy gold chain. You may have reason to believe, sir, but do you have evidence? Indeed I do. I saw you at the Surrey commercial docks receiving the pendant from George Blackwood. I doubt that. You have no business to conduct. Don't let me detain you. I do indeed. George Blackwood himself gave me your name from his cozy cell in Bow Street. If you would believe the word of an incarcerated colonel, sir, you are a fool. Good day. <sighs> Let's try everything I can. I do not believe that I would have much difficulty in convincing the police that you were an accessory after the fact to the murder of the young woman whose pendant you received. Murder? Now let's not be hasty. I recall the pendant. The pendant. I didn't know it was stolen. I can't determine the true provenance of every item in the shop. I can't guarantee the legitimacy of every transaction. I'm a man of business. I rely on the good face of my... To save it for the Inspector Lestrade, Mr. Jameson, where is the pendant? I sold it, almost right after I got hold of it, to a private inquiry agent named Moorhead. He knows me, knows I deal with a certain class of goods. If you take my meaning, he keeps an office in the city, you could find him there. I suppose that's all I know of him. Has anybody else approached you about the pendant? I remind you to be frank with me. Now that you mention it, yes! Shortly after I sold the pendant to Moorhead, one of my regular clients came looking for a pendant. Though he used different, different means than you, he persuaded me to tell him to whom I had sold it. What is the so-called client's name? Hunter. Hunt. What about Hunt? What do you know about him? As little as possible, if you take my meaning. He is what's know in my possession as rough trait. I would like to be a few items and perhaps information. All items are priced as marketed, though prices are negotiable. Information will certainly carry a slightly higher price tag, and you will simply require directions. Okay, well, let's move from one location to another. Where did something new pop up? There. Moorhead and Gardner, Detective Agency. Oh ho ho ho, the plot thickens. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. We wish to speak with one of the principals, preferably Mr. Moorhead. Why, why, the Gwenga? Confidential assistant to the gentleman in Google. Mr. Moorhead, there's Mr. Sherlock Holmes here to see you. Mr. Moorhead, hello? He must have slipped all out while I was missing my tea break. Ah, yes, here's a note. Back in an hour, too. HM, you can leave your card if you like. Might we speak to Mr. Gardner then? No, Mr. Gardner hasn't been in today, which is most aggravating, you should like to know. Why perturb this Mr. Gardner? Because I'm bursting with curiosity, that's why a client, who must remain nameless, you understand, summoned him to a midnight rendezvous to the zoo in Regent's Park. I saw the telegram.